No, we'll start with the with the good stuff. Happy birthday for yesterday. Thank you. How does it feel to be forty? Yeah, uh, yeah, similar. Unsurprisingly, yeah, um, yeah. So it was a nice day. Yeah, got to spend some of it with the family, and um, obviously not as much pressure on the results at this moment. So to have, um, yeah, have just secured our safety before my birthday was nice. Um, but yeah, now as as you'd expect, full full focus on on Manchester United. Still managed to get some some good work done yesterday on. Um, Preparing for what is going to be a very tough game against a, a good side that are still in, yeah, still pushing hard to make sure they qualify for the Champions League. So, will, will be a good test for us tomorrow. You've had a brilliant last third of the season, but you have lost your last two games in the Premier League. Would it be safe to say that if you didn't finish strongly, it would ruin your summer? Um, yeah, I, I want us to finish strongly. I think um, by the time the summer comes, I think. There will be a reflection on what we've achieved, um, regardless of what goes on in the the next two and and the last two. I think if you'd have said to us in them some of them dark months where we were struggling with injuries and um, we were either nineteenth or twentieth, that you're happy to get to thirty nine and sign off with four games left, that you're probably safe. Um, that we would have all signed up for that. So um, yeah, we we obviously set ourselves a goal. Um, we've achieved it, but. Does that mean that we're happy to just stop and park up and finish on 39 points? Definitely not. Um, last weekend was a a good reminder, really, that if you drop your level a little bit, it can look like quite a lot at this level. Premier League's ruthless. So, um, yeah, looking for a response from from last weekend. And Manchester United at home, yeah, great fixture for the boys to, to go and show what they can do. Obviously, it will be a big challenge, like you say, but the fact that you have beaten Tottenham and Liverpool recently would suggest that you can mix it with the big boys yeah we definitely can I think the we, we were performing very very well in those football matches I think um, a real resilience and everyone at 100% in both of those games to, to give ourselves a chance against obviously um, yeah strong opposition and we'll, we'll need to be the same tomorrow we'll need everybody as, as we have done all season I spoke about it briefly around about getting every drop out of everyone players and staff um, and we'll need that again tomorrow to, to obviously Make up the gap between between ourselves and a, and a club like Manchester United. So, um, and the last home game of the season. So, hopefully, we can create a real good atmosphere and the um, players and fans can share another special afternoon here. There's, there's been a few, um, as you say, the Liverpool one, and even over the years, there's been some fantastic afternoons here in the Premier League. And final home game of the season. Get to say thank you to the fans. They so get to see the players for the last time here until the summer. So, um, yeah, hopefully, it can be a successful day for us. What have you learnt about an Eric Ten Hag side from your analysis? They've got a lot of threats, but they've perhaps not been at their very best recently. Yeah, they're like lots of threats, very fluid, um, not as structured as some other teams at the top of the league. They have a lot of rotations, players with a lot of freedom to, to roll around, and um, sometimes that can make it more difficult to prep for than when you, you play teams that yeah, you know where everyone's going to be and you can come up with a real detailed plan. This one's slightly different to that. So, um, yeah, very fluid, um, but obviously big talent. I thought the away game sort of showed that really. I thought game plan wise and the way we went about the game, um, we played really well. Um, but they have moments and of big quality where players can hurt you out of not very much. So, um, yeah, we'll need to be we need to be at the top of our level tomorrow to, to give us a chance. What's the Bournemouth injury update? Have you got anyone that you're welcoming back or have you got anyone you got concerns over? Uh, Junior Traore has trained nearly all week fully um, but will not be involved tomorrow. Um, hopeful to get him some minutes before we um, break up next weekend at, at Everton. So hopefully he'll be around for that one. Um, and then apart from that, we're, we're pretty good. Jeff's um, may have to wear something just to help protect his nose from... Um, the incident last weekend, um, but yeah, won't, won't affect his, uh, his availability. And whilst talking about Jefferson, obviously someone who's been outstanding for large parts of his Bournemouth tenure since he joined, there's a lot of talk about his future, he hasn't signed a new contract, there's been links this week with Crystal Palace and other Premier League sides that are monitoring him. Will this be his farewell to the Bournemouth fans tomorrow, do you feel? Uh, I'm not sure, I think... Um... Yeah, he's a great guy, Jeff, and we're still in discussions with him. He's he's happy, he's enjoying his football. Um, 
but as with every individual they have you have decisions to make about what what looks best for you and your family and um of course we're hopeful Jeff stays as you say if we focus purely on this season for now he's been a big part of what we've managed to achieve has given everything in every single game works his socks off um regardless of contractual situation you know if um, there could be a concern around going into a relegation scrap with somebody that you don't know if they're going to be here or not next year. But that was never even entered my mind just because of the mentality of the player and what he shows me every Saturday. He was just fully committed always to um, to what was needed. So yeah, I think he's had a he's had another successful season. And, and yeah, when we when we return in July, hopefully he's with us. And just finally for me, this will be your first summer um, as a manager. And the first time, I guess, really, you have the opportunity to set out a pre-season and the recruitment strategy and the types of players that you'd like to try and sign. Obviously, I know there's an infrastructure in place here with Richard and Neil and, and you work closely together. In your own mind, do you know what you'd like to do for next season, what players you'd like to try and recruit and what positions you'd like to try and improve on? Yeah, I've sat with, with the guys that you mentioned already around... Um what next season can look like and plans that we put in place. Um, so yeah, we're, we're along that process. One of the benefits of um, getting to 39 points as, as early as we did is we have had a, um, a couple of weeks already where you can move some of your focus to next season that is, is going to come. So um, yeah, we start to, to put some plans in place and um, obviously a lot of things need to get done between now and then, but, but hopeful that as we saw in January, really well planned and um, hopefully the, the summer can be equally as successful for us. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Gary. Hi. You mentioned Jefferson's injury from last week. How did the chat go with Howard Webb you were planning on the Sunday? Yeah, so my weekly chat with Howard. Um, yeah, we do that most Sundays now. So um, my Sundays generally look like watch the little boy play football, speak to Howard Webb, have Sunday roast, start to prep for the next game. Um, so, yeah, Howard was... Yeah, he, he he agreed it should have been a sending off and um, was surprised it was missed. Um, and to be fair to Howard, he very open, very honest. Every time I speak to him, takes his time to speak to me. Um, so, yeah, as a, similar to the Bednarak one recently at Southampton, Howard sort of disagreed with the outcome. Thought that it should have been a penalty at Southampton for us. Felt like there should have been some action <coughs> against Anderson at the weekend. So, I mean, I understand mistakes they, they, they can happen and uh, especially on sort of subjective decisions like that but um, yeah this season seems like there's been a lot go against us so people say they even themselves out over the course of a season it, it hasn't definitely for us this season but hopefully they even themselves over the course over the course of two um, and we get a good few go our way next season last home game as you said if you could pick out one or two of your favorite moments since taking over here at the vitality here at the Vitality, yeah. So the Everton game, obviously before the um, before the World Cup break, um, big day for everybody. Um, going into the the World Cup break off the off a big win, the atmosphere inside the place. Um, I think the comeback against Fulham was was huge as well. We hadn't really, um, yeah, we hadn't really got into our winning run or our, yeah, we hadn't really picked up momentum results wise by that point. Um, one nil down at home to Fulham. Um, tough game, sort of tactically not going quite how we'd expected um, at half time to, to, to fight our way back and win that one was big. Uh, obviously, Liverpool, and any time you beat Liverpool as uh, as Bournemouth is is a big one. So, um, yeah, and, and hopeful that tomorrow we can make sure that we, we give a real good performance that you can feel that connection with the fans again, which has been there for, yeah, for large parts of this season. They've been an incredible backing for the players. Um, and that we can get that connection one more time and um, they can show their appreciation for the players because the players have given absolutely everything this year, um, achieved more than 99% of people in the country thought we could um, and we can show our appreciation to the fans for, for sticking with us because I'm sure it was tough at times for them as well, some away games where we yeah, we, we didn't manage to get good results or we suffered late defeats and you know, the Arsenal game, the, the Leeds game, so um, appreciation with to them for, for sticking by the players. Ahmed Traore signed permanently this week, yeah. still only 23. What do you see his future looking like? Yeah, I think he's, yeah, there's so much improvement in him. I, I, I think still, I think he, um, he 
he's had a few injuries this season. Even before he came to us, I think he, he missed a few games. Um, and then when he joined fitness-wise, he wasn't quite up to speed. He, I think his first game was Brighton away and um, we had to take him off quite early. F physically, he wasn't, wasn't ready to do 90 at that point. And then he suffered a few other setbacks. So, yeah, delighted that we have his quality, undoubted quality um, with us for the for a sustained period and excited as to where we can get him because he gets a he gets a pre-season with us now so um, to add to those moments of quality that he's been able to bring can we get a guy that is able to go relentlessly for 90 minutes in and out of possession um, and still bring those yeah those those little bits that he shows where he he can bring real, real quality to our side for you life begins at 40 they say how much would it mean to you and how much of an achievement would it be to get to 40 points Perhaps if you take a, a point off Manchester United. Yeah, I think um, yeah, as as Mark said, we've lost our last two games, so we um, yeah, we we've been thirty nine points is a is a good tally, but it it was better two weeks ago, so we've been we've been stuck on it for a couple of weeks, and um, yeah, even even losing football matches, you don't want to lose them. How we lost at, at Crystal Palace, so um, Chelsea game, we came and had a good go, a few things, fine margins, missed some chances. Uh, like if you're going to lose a Premier League game, that's how you lose it. You don't you don't lose it how we did it at Crystal Palace. So um, tomorrow we need to go in and just be the best version of ourselves. It's it's been enough ten eleven times this year, however many we've we've managed to pick up, um, and hopefully we can we can add one or two more before the before the summer. Just finally from me, you said the people at the golf club gave you a bit of a rough ride uh, in terms of how the the management process has aged you. Um, what what do you kind of agonise? most over do you think what, what what sort of really keeps you awake at night yeah no it's not so much it's just it just always feels like there's there's just stuff to do so it's just um yeah like mentally there's there's always things that you've, you you're thinking about around results and the ups and downs of results and but no, nothing that I didn't expect really I think it's yeah I've enjoyed it I've even enjoyed sort of managing myself through some of those like tough situations, managing yourself through. Okay, yeah, we have just beat Tottenham three two, but we need to like let's let's not get too carried away. A big result for me and the group and the players, but the next game is still as important as it was. So um, yeah, man managing myself through those highs and lows, and um, being able to pick myself up and then pick the group up after things like Arsenal. Um, so yeah, some challenges that all managers face, I'm sure, at all levels, but. Um, yeah, for it to be my first time and for it to be at the highest level that there is, um, I've learned a lot about myself and, and the group.